Um, it was actually my neighbour was involved at a, a local club, North Bowen. I, I grew up in Melbourne, uh, and he saw me playing out in the street and uh, invited me down to, to his club. And then uh, I guess the, the rest is history. I, I played in the, uh, I think it was the under 12 boys team there. And they were also just starting up a, a women's under 17s team as well. So I had a season there and then I, I went across to Box Hill Women's Cricket Club and, and basically played there until I, I moved into States. And I was the same, actually a girl that I went to school with um, said she was gonna go and try um, this cricket thing down at the local park and I said right I'll come along absolutely hated it turns out I was playing in the sandpit more than actually playing um, cricket dad had to keep running down the hill and pulling me back into line but um, I guess I sort of must have enjoyed it some part of it and, and kept playing but... yeah look it was a an amazing day I think not just for cricket but for sport and in particular women's sport yeah, it was just an amazing experience. I know for me, walking out to bat, um, you know, when they call your name out to stroll out and to hear the roar that we did, I've never heard anything like that in my career, nor did I ever think that anything like that would ever happen. So it was just an amazing experience. And yeah, to, to win a World Cup at home is incredibly difficult to do. They don't, those opportunities don't come up very often. And it was just one of those days in your career where everything seemed to come off. I know that I could have been could have been out in the second over, um, first or second over, trying to swing hard and got caught at, um, caught, could, could have been caught at cover, but it's just one of those days where everything seemed to come out of the middle and um, I don't think you could wipe the smile off my face the whole day. I was just enjoying being out there, enjoying the atmosphere. And... You know, to see families and young boys and girls um, coming along and, and watching the game, I think it just shows how powerful it is um, for, for female role models to, to really have a, a presence and for those role models to use the platforms that they have to encourage other girls um, to, to be active and play sport. And you know, obviously I'm, I'm passionate about cricket because it's a, a game that I really enjoy and, and love being part of. But um, you know, I think in, in general, there's some really good messaging around there about um, you know, females being in, involved in, in sport and um, yeah, not only you know, learning to be part of a team and those sorts of things, but growing in confidence and, and doing something as well that might be a little bit out of their comfort zone at times. And, and I guess it's a different generation, but you know, when I was growing up, I didn't see a lot of the Australian women's team. Like Rachel said, we didn't really know who was in it. I didn't really know who Belinda Clark was. I heard her on the news every now and then because she made 200 um, in a one day game, you know? And so for me, all I ever wanted to do was be like Ricky Ponting. So all I did was grab that ridge back and clung onto it as long as I possibly could because that's all I saw. So for me, it's slightly different and I love the kahuna because, you know, Ricky used to use that, but for a young sort of nine, 10 year old um, young girl at the moment, they might stroll into store and go, I want that bat that Rachel Haynes uses. We never really played too much backyard cricket, but I grew up with um, some really close family friends. I had three boys and um, our backyard cricket battles took place in their house and I never used to get a bat because one of them would bat all day. I'd stand behind the stumps, I'd have a bowl and I'd get whacked everywhere. And then as soon as I got my opportunity to bat, I hit one straight back at them over the fence for six and I was out. So I literally got one ball all day. So I absolutely hated it. You had two hand head butt and if you fell into the bush and wrecked it, um, you were the one who had to go <laughs> in and tell um, whoever's house it was that you, you destroyed the, the garden. But um, yeah, it was always really good fun. Um, I think most people would assume that I'd say Uncle Ian, but I, I don't think I actually really understood what he was doing when I was growing up. I think he retired right when I sort of really got into cricket and sort of understood it. So for me, I didn't really understand that he was out there playing for Australia and how good he really was. It's only now that I re-watch footage of him keeping to Shane Warne that I realised how how awesome he was. So for me, I love watching Ricky Ponting, and I, I know I just said that, but he was just like the pinnacle of batting for me and all I wanted to do was play the pull shot like Ricky Ponting and you know play that cover drive that he does that really quirky step into the ball so for me I that's all I ever wanted to do anything like and so it's always disappointing for me nowadays when I rewatch footage because there's so much of it out there that it doesn't look anything like him but um, he was a real idol of mine growing up and I guess that's how you sort of mold your game and 
for me, naturally, I'm a, a quite an aggressive um, player and potentially that's where it might have stemmed from. I used to absolutely love watching Shane Warne bowl and just be captivated by that. Yeah, I don't know. I just found it mesmerising watching him play. And, um, you know, whenever there was a test match on and he was bowling, I just used to sit on the couch and watch it. And, yeah, growing up, you had to go to the grounds to be able to, to see these players. And I remember going to um, Punt Road Oval one day and, and watching, um, you know, Karen Rolton. She was a player that lots of people spoke about when I grew up. Um, you know, talking about how phenomenal she was, how hard she hit the ball. She opened the bowling as well for South Australia at the time. And so I got on the train one day and, and went down and, and um, watched her play against Victoria. And that was basically how you, you got to see these, these women play the game. Um, so yeah, it's obviously come ahead in, in leaps and bounds now in terms of accessibility and it's a really positive thing. Unfortunately, the keepers just get tagged with the most annoying. I don't think we necessarily deserve it all the time, but um, it's just the nature of the job. The, the role of the keeper is to get the side up and about, and whatever way you can do that, um, you do that. And more often than not, it is giving everyone a bit of stick. So um, I guess they're all welcome. Um, situation of we were really grateful to actually play because that's ultimately what we want to do, right? We want to play cricket and, and get out there rather than train. So. And we were definitely grateful from that perspective, but it was it was really challenging um, walking out your door every day and cricket just being there. And you know, even on your rest days, um, you know, it wasn't really a rest day because someone would run into you and ask you to do something, and it's hard to say no when you're just sort of standing there and they know that you haven't got a game on or training or something like that. So um, I think it was more just from that point of view of not being able to actually genuinely switch off. Um, which cricket is such a mental game and if you're just constantly sort of draining your, your energy towards that, it can get hard towards the end. Um, but having said that, the squad that I was part of with the Thunder, we had a, a pretty young group and they absolutely loved every second of it. I cannot emphasise that enough. They thought it was amazing. They thought it was so cool to, to wake up and run into you know, Elisa Healy or Elise Perry in the corridor or downstairs at at, um, at um, the server and those sorts of things. So, And we touched on it before, so I'll bring it up. It's a little bit hard as a wiki keeper to ruffle a few feathers on the field and then come back and see everyone at dinner. That's all I'll say. <laughs>